And now, oh lord. <laughs> this is like Mortal Kombat. Fatality. Hi, I'm Yuji. I'm a professional chef. And these are my $279 sushi roll ingredients. Hey, I'm Joe. I'm a home cook. And these are my $19 sushi roll ingredients. The head is dragging. I uh, need that to cook. I think I can do a lot of fun things with this. <laughs> I don't know what any of this is. I'm extremely intimidated by all of this. Even this thing is intimidating to me. I was planning to make nakaochi tekamaki with rosemary lime rice and tuna bone marrow dipping sauce. Marrow sauce, that's what I was gonna make. I had a farm fresh tuna. So this is definitely tuna, tuna bones. I was going to scrape the meat off the bone. That is what the nakaochi means. Then I was gonna use a bone itself to make tuna bone marrow sauce. <laughs> I can see this guy's spine. I have a koshi hikari rice, which is the best you can get. That's this. And everything I needed to make rosemary lime Vinegar. This is a lot. That is 100%. I know that. I also have a takuman, which is a dried pickled daikon radish. These are uh, leaves. Shiso leaf, Japanese cucumber, and then fresh wasabi root. Is this wasabi? Very hard to get. All of this is going to be a bunch of sushi. I don't get it, but I'm going to do it. The sushi I was going to make was pretty basic. These might be simpler, but with a little technique, I can make something amazing. If I have to guess, these will cost me about $22. That's very close. A hundred and thirty-seven dollars, even. No. <laughs> Is it all the, the tuna? In my hands, I hold Chef Yuji's recipe book. Not really a recipe, this is just a list of ingredients. There's no instructions in here at all. He did, however, draw a little sushi guy. Man, I think that's probably all I need. Two things that you want to keep in your mind when you're making sushi are precision and balance. Balance is more for flavor profile and precision is more for the look. I feel like maybe I, me and my friend here are a little in over our heads. Can I call Rose now? <laughs> Hi Rose. Hey Joe, how are you? I have a huge tuna in front of me and I think I have to scrape its bones. I think so too. First things first, with the tuna, it's a big fish. You're gonna take a spoon and gently work from the spine out to the edge of the ribs and scrape off the meat. Oh, <laughs> that's like a, this is sushi meat. And then reserve that because you're gonna use it in your sushi roll later on. It just comes off so easy. I thought I was gonna be hacking something up. Maybe I will be. This is really like meditative. It's very satisfying. Tuna is the most popular ingredient for sushi and also nakaochi is a term that is mostly associated with a tuna rib meat. I wanted to kind of show how important it is to use all parts of tuna, including the bone. I think I've scraped off all the meat and look at this beautiful bowl. Once he finishes scraping all the nakaochi meat, he's not done yet. He's gonna have to open up tuna bones and then find the marrow sauce. And this is gonna take a little bit of uh, physical activity. You're gonna take really sharp kitchen scissors and you're gonna cut off as close to the spine all of the ribs. Oh, I've never done anything like this before. I feel like I've seen it done. Dexter. All right. Oh! He's going to have to we go. cut off all the rib first so that the tuna bone will only have the spinal center bone. This is brutal to look at. All right, it's marrow extracting time. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make a slit in between each vertebrae on both sides, deep enough so that when you pull it apart, it'll crack open. And now we're gonna just, oh, <gasps> yo, oh. It's actually synovial fluid, so it gives a little bit of a cushion in between each vertebrae, kind of like we have in our body too. I did not know what was happening inside of a spine. I thought it was just bones. I've mastered this now. If I had to get the goop out of anyone's bones in some kind of emergency medical situation, I could do it. And you're gonna just take that and you're gonna mix it with soy sauce and that's gonna be the sauce for your sushi rolls. It's gonna be delicious. So it's, <laughs> it's just looking like blobs with some soy sauce in it. That's good. That is good. It does kind of taste like the ocean. I'm proud already. Joe was going to make very basic salmon roll with this piece of salmon. Instead of using this salmon as it is, I'm going to cure it. 
Curing means taking the excess water out of the protein with salt. Curing kind of concentrates the flavor and also makes the protein last longer. This seems like a very simple step, but it makes a very big difference in terms of your flavor, shelf life, and also texture to cut. I'm going to put this salmon in a fridge for about a half hour. All right, it's rice time. Uh, I have right here the Cadillac of rice, I'm told. In my opinion, rice is the most important part of making good sushi roll. Sushi means rice. I've never had rice that you had to untie before. I gave Joe a special short grain rice. This short grain rice has starch in it. It makes the rice sticky and it makes the sushi making much easier. This looks like it should be at the bottom of a fish tank or something. You raise the rice so that you can kind of take off the excess starch that originally in a package. After rinsing the rice, he's gonna soak the rice in the water about 20 minutes. Joe is gonna work with a Japanese clay pot known as donabe. I've never seen or heard of a donabe before. It's quicker to make uh, rice compared to rice cooker and then it just creates a really great finish and products. I'm gonna let this soak about 20-30 minutes and after that it's cooking time. It's been about 30 minutes. My rice is sufficiently soaked. I'm gonna drop in the kombu. Returning back to where it came from, the sea. Kombu is a type of dry kelp. I guess maybe this tastes like the ocean. I feel like we're getting ocean flavors from everywhere. We got one lid. I'm gonna second lid for safety. I'm gonna cook this rice about 15 minutes, and then when it's done, it's gonna be life-changing. I think for me, for Chef Yuji, for everyone who eats it. I have this piece of uh, cucumber, which I think he was going to use it as a fresh for his roll. This is a four sheet nori. I'm going to use half of this size. I'm going to cut this cucumber in thirds so that it will fit in the half sheet nori. I have a Japanese cucumber, I have a top Kwan, which is a pickled daikon radish. That's what this guy is right here. So they need to be the same length as my sushi paper stuff. I love cucumber. Taking the seeds off so that uh, there won't be much moisture left in cucumber. If we have too much moisture left on the cucumber, that will make the seaweed kind of soggy and then the flavor and texture of the maki won't be as good. Cucumber's done. I'm gonna do the same thing with this uh, floppy pickled radish. And I want you to see the floppiness in full effect. This is what a pickle radish looks like. I don't know what they look like when they're not pickled, but this is a funny looking vegetable. And me not knowing that doesn't impact whether I can cook or not. As you can see, I've chopped up the radish with no problem. Boom, look at this. Vegetables are cut, I did a great job, if I say so myself. Since I have this sushi vinegar, I decided to pickle this cucumber in a asazuke style. Asazuke means just quick pickle with simply salt and vinegar. Asazuke works with many fresh vegetables and it's a great way to add just extra flavor to vegetables. Now we're gonna get started with my rosemary lime sushi vinegar. And to do that, I have to pour this vinegar and I gotta heat it up to 180 degrees. Joe is gonna be making his own sushi vinegar from scratch to season plain rice for the use of sushi. Now this is the easiest part so far. All I gotta do is melt some salt and sugar. I don't have to cut anything or chop the goop out of anybody's bones. The sushi vinegar that he's gonna be making today is traditional, but not traditional because he's gonna be adding something that you don't usually see. Combination of rosemary and lime. That's my favorite combination. Oh yeah. And I like that they come off like little lightning bolts. I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes and when I come back, I'm gonna have rosemary lime vinegar that I made myself. I have wasabi and mayonnaise. Guess what? I'm gonna make wasabi mayo. Watch out, this is gonna be hard. <laughs> is that a common thing that happens? <laughs> This looks like there is no real wasabi root in it, but it smells amazing. This is the wasabi I grew up with, so it's, I have nothing against it. Hmm. Wow, it's pretty good actually. I've never in my life seen wasabi. It's very expensive and also it's very hard to get. A lot of the sushi restaurants don't even use the real fresh wasabi. Is it gonna be green like the stuff that I'm used to? <laughs> Tell me about this wasabi though. It's a beautiful ingredient. You're going to peel it a little bit. You can use a scraper, a knife, or the side of a chopstick and get that outer area off. Okay, it is nice and green. This is the color I was expecting. Rose told me I could take this off with a chopstick, and I am gonna do one, like, one little chopstick slide just to see what that feels like. I'm gonna go back to the knife. 
That smells strong. It smells like it's gonna clear out my sinuses when I eat some of this, but I kind of like that feeling. Then you're gonna take your special tool. It's a shark skin grater. I'm so excited to do this. You're gonna take the wasabi and rub it against the shark skin. Because it has all of these convex bumps there, it's gonna make the creamiest wasabi that you have ever had. So if you are in the ocean and you have a wasabi root, you can just roll right up to a shark and just do this right on their back. I kind of want to eat a little bit of this. I might regret this. That's really good. This is like real smooth, real mellow. It's so fragrant and it's so flavorful. I can just eat like this. All right, I got the shark skin down. I'm getting a little bit more leverage. I'm getting some nice, look at all that mush. That's looking real good. Look at that, my wasabi's done. I'm ready to go. All right, I'm ready to season my rice. I got my vinegar that I made, my rosemary lime vinegar. I got my rice in the bowl here. Oh man, right off the bat, I did not expect the kombu to look like this. I could make boots out of that. I've never made rice this good in my entire life. This is, um, I wanna sleep in this. I love the Don Abbey. I'm not gonna get one because I don't know where to get a Don Abbey, but I am always gonna talk about how, if I see somebody making rice, I'll probably be like, you should get a Don Abbey. They'll be like, what's that? And I'll be like, don't worry about it. You wouldn't understand. This is my lime rosemary vinegar. I'm gonna use this to season the rice. It's supposedly very strong, so I'm gonna kind of take it easy. I'm just gonna throw a little bit in there and then we're gonna kind of mix it around. That tastes good. I'm gonna cover it up with a warm, damp towel. This rice is literally ready to roll. Joe sent me these two ingredients, tofu and rice. But I wanted to make something exciting and fun. So today I'm going to make tofu rice noodle. With the rice, I'm going to make rice flour. I'm going to take water out of the tofu. And I'm gonna add it to the food processor and add a little bit of salt. So I have to now blend this with the tofu. I'm looking for a texture that looks like pasta dough. I'm gonna put the dough in a pastry bag and I'm gonna squeeze the noodles into the hot water. It's a lot of fun, it's like udon noodles now. But since it's a rice noodle, I wanna make sure that they don't break apart when I transfer it. The dough is a lot tighter than I thought, but I think tofu is making it nice and fluffy after it's cooked. It's kind of chewy, it's nice. This is tofu rice noodle. All right, I got my beautiful bowl of tuna. I'm gonna cut it up into little tiny bits. I'm just gonna kind of do it like this. I mean, little bits, that'll fit into a sushi nicely. I bet the hardest part of doing this is not eating everything before you put it into a sushi together. Case my salmon, cured about a half hour in the fridge. You shouldn't see any salt left on the surface of the meat. Meat becomes a little bit stickier and also nice and glossy. That's a sign of a perfectly cured salmon. I just use a little bit of paper towel to hold the skin. And then as I move the knife forward, I kind of pull the skin so that skin comes off. But I'm gonna do this this side too. As you can see, you see some shiny grayish part left. It's actually the fat right underneath of the skin. So this is what really tastes great. I'm gonna just cut it into strips, just like the shape of a cucumber. So that will make the length of a nori seaweed. Now my next step is to make the salmon skin crispy. I'm gonna make it crispy with this rice flour from before. It's gonna be like a nice crust. Like any fish skin, it's very delicious when it's cooked well. And it also is gonna add interesting texture into my roll. It's time. Everything that I've been doing has been leading to this moment. I'm about to make sushi. Here, first, we got the nori. So, Joe will be making tekamaki in hosomaki style. Tekamaki means tuna roll in Japanese. And then nori has smooth side and then the rough side. You're gonna put the ingredients on the rough side. Rice on rough, I gotta keep telling myself that so I don't mess it up. I was told that you have to wet your fingers a little bit when you're working with the rice so that it doesn't stick. I hope this isn't too much rice. The rice will have to be a perfect rectangular shape. I'm gonna take a couple of my shiso leaves, I'm gonna throw them on here. I'm gonna take pickle radish, one of my Japanese cucumbers. I got a little trench so that my tuna meat doesn't escape. Oh my God. This is how you do a tuna trench in any situation. I hope this is not too much. 
tuna. I'm ready to roll my sushi. I'm scared to do this, I'm scared to mess it up. This process is very important to do precisely. When you roll it, you're not gonna close the seaweed and the seaweed. It's actually the beginning of the race and then the end of the race. That's what you are aiming to kind of close. All right, so now I gotta just get it there and I just gotta squeeze it. <laughs> uh -oh. I think I rolled it up a little too fat. It's not sealed. Maybe I can just hide that and Chef Yuji won't notice. Or I can try another one. The roll I'm going to make is called the temaki hand roll, which I need a half sheet set so I can make four rolls with this. The shape is going to be like a ice cream corn shape and you roll it with your hand. Usually, you're gonna have rice first in the middle, but I have this tofu rice noodles, so I'm going to put it in the middle. Thing's gonna be the salmon crispy skin, and then pickled cucumber, and then nice avocado, salmon brushed with the soy sauce. You're gonna start from this side and then, then close it. And then you're gonna roll it very lightly on time. And then it creates this roll, just like an ice cream cone. All right, take two, let's try it again. I got my beautiful rice, rice on rough. And you just want one thin layer of rice. I got my shiso leaves. This little dude, nice little cucumber. Use the tuna meat sparingly, just want it to sit nicely. I'm just clearing off a little uh, of this excess that I got. I went a little heavy with the tuna because it's so delicious. And now I'm going to push it down, give it a little squeeze, maybe roll it up a little bit more. And then I made sushi. <laughs> That's a sushi right there. A sushi? That's sushi right there. All right, I'm ready to play. When it comes to cutting sushi roll, precision is very important. So you gotta get a nice wet towel. I sometimes have a water next to it, so you can kind of put your knife, make it wet, which makes it a little bit easier to cut. Look at that. I gotta wet it again. It has to be spotless. You can't have the goop from the rice on it. So I'm gonna do eight pieces. It looks like it came out of a restaurant. I can't believe I made this. There you go. Now what I'm going for is like two little groups of sushis, because I kind of like having them even. Throw a little round of wasabi right there. This is the uh, wasabi mayonnaise. And then we'll take some of my spinal goop sauce right there. We got ourselves a nice little plate of sushi. Looks nice and healthy. <laughs> hey, chef. Hey, how's it good going? Good to see you. Did you have a good, good time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I tried. I, I tried my best. It was a little yeah. challenging, but um, I, I hope I made you proud. <laughs> what? Good job. Yeah, it was great. Good? Yeah, it's A plus on it. Yeah. What did you do? Did you make noodles? With the tofu, yep. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> tofu for that? Yeah. This is like really, really good. Like people are gonna think like this is like made by a professional sushi chef. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. no, for real, yeah. This looks amazing. I wanna try it. I'm just gonna follow your lead. So you're gonna just dip it into with wasabi mayo. Oh my god, this is so good. What's the crunchy thing in there? What is that? You got the salmon inside. I took off the skin and then fried it. That's, uh, I'm, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> yeah, this is not from the wasabi, this is from emotions. <laughs> All right, I gotta know what you think about mine now. That is very, very good. I eat sushi all the time, like every day. Is this up to the standard? Above the standard, it's very good. Thank yeah. you. No, no, no it's yeah. real, I'm, I'm not joking. Right. Yeah, I don't joke around, yeah. I'm an amazing sushi chef. Mm -hmm. You are amazing sushi chef, man. <laughs> I need a job. <laughs> Send me Is a, a spot for me? Send me a resume. <laughs> All right. It'll be this. It'll be just today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>